Were you arrested for a fail to ID charge? Maybe you got scared and you were afraid to tell the officer your real name. Maybe you had an active warrant. Now you find yourself facing a more serious charge. Hi, I'm Jeff Hampton with the Hampton Law Firm. Today I want to talk about how to beat a fail to ID case. Failure to ID cases range from a class C ticket up to a class A misdemeanor. Listen, I'm going to go over all the ins and outs of what the law has to say about a failure to identify, uh, identify case. If you'll wait around to the end of this video, I'll also give you a free ebook, What to Do If You Have Been Charged With a Crime in Texas. Okay, now listen, it's critical, even though it may not seem like it's a big deal, especially if you are facing a class B or a class A failure to identify case, it's a big deal that you handle this case properly, particularly if you're a first time offender. Maybe you were being investigated for a public intoxication. Maybe you got a little nervous and you didn't want to say anything to the officer about who your real, what your real name was. Maybe you kind of, maybe you didn't say the full name. Maybe you gave somebody else's name. Now you're facing a much more serious offense. So let's identify number one, what has to be proven? What does the Texas penal code say failure to identify involves? So if you're facing this charge, here's what the state of Texas has to prove beyond a reasonable doubt in order to convict you. A person commits an offense if he intentionally, notice this is critical here, criminal intent, if he intentionally refuses to give his name, address, or date of birth to a peace officer who has lawfully arrested the person and requested the information. A person commits an offense if he intentionally gives a false or fictitious name, residence address, or date of birth to a peace officer who has lawfully arrested the person, lawfully detained the person, or requested the information from a person that the peace officer has good cause to believe is a witness to a criminal offense. Now, the Texas Penal Code states that if the alleged failure to identify involves failing to give a name, an address, or a date of birth after a valid arrest, here we're only talking about a Class C misdemeanor. Class C misdemeanors under Texas law are punishable by a fine only of up to $500, no jail time. Now for some people that's not a big deal, they don't care, they'll just go pay the fine. And that's fine if you wanna do that if you don't care about it being on your criminal record. Now the Texas uh, Penal Code states that if the alleged failure to identify involves someone giving a false name, here's the difference, the first one, just didn't give a name at all. Now you're talking about a false or fictitious name, residence, address, or date of birth to a peace officer who has lawfully arrested the person, lawfully detained or requested the information from a person that the police officer believes to be a witness to a criminal offense. Now you're talking about a class B misdemeanor. A class B misdemeanor is punishable by up to 180 days in jail and up to a $2,000 fine. Now, the Texas, state, the Texas Penal Code also states that if you intentionally give a false or fictitious name, uh, address, or date of birth, and after you've been lawfully arrested, and it turns out you also had a warrant, okay, here's the problem, what if you also had a warrant and you gave a false name? Now, if you gave a warrant and you had a false name, you're looking at a Class A misdemeanor. That Class A misdemeanor is punishable by up to one year in the county jail and up to a $4,000 fine. Now, here's the thing. The crime of failure to ID doesn't look like a big deal, but someone lied about their name or date of birth, right? Who cares? Well, Texas criminal law makes it clear that lying or misinterpreting your name, date of birth, or address can come with some very serious short-term and long-term consequences. For example, if you fail to hire an attorney that may, helps to make sure and handle this the right way, a conviction could land you with a sentence of up to a year in jail and up to a $4,000 fine. Plus, listen, no one wants this on their permanent criminal record. You know why? Look, it sounds like somebody's lying. It sounds like a crime of, of dishonesty where someone just lied about something to a police officer. So let's talk for a few minutes. The remainder of this video, I want to talk to you about some of the criminal defenses 
to the offensive failed ID. Let's figure out some ways that maybe you can get your case dismissed. Number one, the Tarrant County prosecutor, or whoever the prosecutor is in the county you're in in Texas, must prove beyond a reasonable doubt that you intentionally gave a false or fictitious name, residence address, or date of birth to a peace officer who lawfully arrested you. So the number one defense is lack of criminal intent. What if you made an honest mistake? And this does happen, and we've seen instances where this takes place. We've seen it happen where a police officer asks for someone's name and date of birth, the client provides the exact date of birth and last name, but reverses their middle and first name because his common name is his middle name. There are many people who go by their middle name because, quite frankly, they don't like their first name, and they commonly respond to someone when they ask them, what is your name? They go by their middle name first. So, well, guess what happened? I mean, look, technically... The client provided all the information to the police officer. It was all correct. Just some of it was out of order. Should there be a charge for failure to ID here? Arguably, no. The state of Texas, I believe, in the cases that we fought on these, would have a hard time being able to prove the element of criminal intent beyond a reasonable doubt. In fact, this is a good scenario where your criminal defense attorney should be pushing for an outright dismissal. Look, if I wanted to deceive a police officer, I'm not going to just mix, mix and match my first and last name. I'm going to give something totally off the wall, just something totally different than what my name is. Criminal intent here would be difficult, much more likely that this was just a mistake. Okay. Now, number two, and this is a defense but not really a defense, is intoxication. See, voluntary intoxication is never a defense to a crime in Texas. However, what if a Fort Worth police officer approaches someone coming from the 7th Street bar area, this happens all the time, and realizes that they've had a few drinks at the bar, believes that they're intoxicated. If the individual is intoxicated, they don't, now they're not supposed to have the normal use of their mental or physical faculties. If the officer then begins to ask the person their name, their date of birth, and their address, and some of it comes out confusing or inaccurate in some way, should they be charged with failure to identify? I mean, probably so, but should they be convicted or allowed to have this charge on their permanent criminal record? I don't know. See, there you're talking about some mitigation. They're already being arrested for public intoxication, and when you're intoxicated, you might not remember everything exactly right because you're intoxicated, right? I mean, that's part of the whole point of it. Your criminal attorney should fight hard in this factual situation to attempt to negotiate some type of dismissal. Police officers sometimes take advantage of someone who is intoxicated by looking for any minor deviation in the information that is provided to them to justify a charge of failure to identify. Think about it. A public intoxication is only a Class C misdemeanor, punishable by a fine only. But if the police officer can find something, even a small little deviation of what someone says, now they get to elevate it up to a higher charge of a Class B misdemeanor of failure to identify. That now means there's a higher bond that the person has to post, more serious ramifications to their charge. Sometimes this happens, okay? Now, the next defense we're going to talk about is unlawful arrest or detention. To be convicted of the crime of fair to identify, the state must prove that you intentionally gave a false name, date of birth, or address to a peace officer who has lawfully arrested the person or lawfully detained the person. What if you were unlawfully detained? What about that? For example, what if an officer pulls over your vehicle, approaches you, starts asking you questions and pulls out of the car and pulls you out of the car and places you in handcuffs and begins demanding that you provide your name, date of birth and address? What if there's confusion regarding what you said and now you are facing a failure to identify charge? Here's what, the, here's what needs to happen. We need to look at the reason the police officer pulled you over to begin with. This is critical. Did he have reasonable suspicion to pull you over and have this traffic stop? If not, you have a valid defense because if the stop was illegal, then he's not going to be able to argue that he detained you legally. So any information that subsequently led to a failure to identify arrest could be thrown out and not allowed in court. Okay. Now, here's the question everybody asks me. Can a failure to identify case be dismissed? Well, that's always our goal, okay? If you're facing this type of charge or any other case for that matter, our goal is always to get a case dismissed. How do we do this? Number one, dismissal for lack of evidence. The number one way your criminal lawyer should be looking to get rid of your case is to be able to establish the state of Texas has insufficient evidence to prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt. 
Remember, you don't have the burden to prove anything. The prosecutor must prove everything beyond a reasonable doubt. And your criminal defense attorney should be able to break down the police reports, the, all the digital media evidence, and find, is there areas where the state maybe failed to be able to prove their burden? If so, your case could be dismissed. Secondly, a conditional dismissal. What if you did commit the actual crime of failure to identify? What if the evidence actually even looks bad for you? But what if you're a first-time offender? What if you're a good person? What if you got a good job or maybe you're in school, you're in college, and you're trying to take care of your business? Sometimes the prosecutor will agree through the efforts of your attorney to negotiate a dismissal of the charge in exchange for completing a class or some community service, maybe a donation to a charity. And this gives the prosecutor receiving the proof some sort of, you know, something to put in their file to say that you learned your lesson, right? But in the same vein, you are able to be able to still receive a dismissal that makes you eligible to get it expunged from your criminal record. Finally, a diversion program dismissal. Particularly in the courts of Tarrant County, there are diversion programs such as the Deferred Prosecution Program where you could potentially get into a program that allows your failure to identify case to be dismissed and eligible for an immediate expunction, no waiting period. And this is an element there that if you're a first time offender, if you were to work with our office, we would look into that for you and see if that's a good fit for you, okay? Now listen, how do I get my failure to identify case off my criminal record? Last thing I wanna to say to you is this. Don't ever assume anything comes off your record. Even if you turn out that you're able to get your case dismissed, it does not. Your arrest is still sitting out there on your criminal record unless you file for an expunction. You must file for an expunction to get it off your record. You see, I, I, even if your case was dismissed through a diversion program, it doesn't matter what it is. If you don't take those next necessary steps, You'll still have it out there on your record. You won't be able to get a job. You may not even know it. I've had people call me years later, 10, 15 years later, saying, I can't get a good job. I didn't know what I was supposed to do. What's going on? And I tell them, wait a minute. You mean to tell me your lawyer didn't tell you you got to get an expunction? You got to actually file for an expunction? So understand, if you are facing a failed ID charge, don't stop there. You need to also work with an attorney that knows the rules for expunctions in Texas, and you need to follow through with that step to get that failed to ID arrest and charge permanently destroyed or deleted from your records, okay? Now listen, I hope you've enjoyed this video. We at the Hampton Law Firm, we offer free case analysis and a free consultation. If you or a loved one are facing a failed ID charge or any other charge for that matter in Texas, and particularly in the courts of North Texas, we would be happy to provide you a free case analysis and a consultation. Don't hesitate to contact the Hampton Law Firm at 817-877-5200. By the way, I promised you a free ebook all you have to do is click the link below and I'll be happy to send you the free ebook of what to do if you've been charged with a crime in Texas. Thanks again for joining us here today. Look forward to seeing you on our next video series.